Okay, so here we are in Sheffield, my studio, and um, while thinking about what to do for this feature, uh, um, I actually need to do a remix for my label. My label, my label is called Slave. I work together with Chris over there. Um, Chris is the, the label manager. Uh, he actually helps me out with engineering, and we're going to get in, in, him in at some point as well. Um, I thought about what to do for this feature, and the most obvious thing to do was to actually... Uh, tie it in with something that I need to do anyway um, and now there's a release we've got coming up by uh, a Leeds guy called Mechanique uh, the track called Meta and I was wanting to do a remix and uh, I actually go away to Australia for a tour uh, in a couple of weeks no next week so I wanted to get it done before then so it's a perfect opportunity to actually do the remix or at least start the remix and I can also show you how I would sort of approach the remix in terms of rhythm construction in terms of the arrangement etc um, how the things put together, you know, a few techniques of how to do it. I don't think I'll be able to finish it in this short time we've got, but I can, I can at least kind of, you know, show you how, you know, some techniques that I might use to create the, to create the remix itself. Um, obviously, for this, we've got uh, all the remix parts. Now, the guy from Mechanique, Chris, he's quite good. He's sent me all the parts um, as WAV files, and they're all sort of looped up or ready to go. So it's a case of just dropping them into the arrangement, seeing what we like, seeing what we don't like, um, and kind of building up around there. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with my basic auto load, which uh, you know, is very basic. I mean, I've just got a few audio instruments in Logic, uh, a few audio instruments. We've got some samplers, we've got some you know, drum machines, etc. And I've just got some basic drum patterns here. Um, we know we've got like a basic just a kick drum uh, these are just patterns and uh, not necessarily going to use the sounds that are on here but they're just patterns for, for something to start with basically so it's a basic auto load um, you can see with my mixer here um, I'm just going to be working with the audio instrument side of things which is across the front and uh, then also I've got behind the arrangement view I've got the audio window where all of the actual remix parts have already been imported in so you know we've got uh, you know all the bits that he sent me of the track are all there broken down all you know in loops etc so all it is is a case of dragging these parts into the auto load um, seeing what we like seeing what we don't like and then kind of constructing it around there I want to play you a bit of the original track so you know what we're reference, referencing to basically. Now the track is actually quite a uh, sort of a techie, I'd say it's a tech house kind of, minimal tech house kind of vibe. Um, and it's original, it's a real sort of jacking, groovy thing. Not really that eventful, it's just sort of just more of a groove. And what I wanted to do with it is keep basically the same thing but make it a bit sort of more big room. Kind of, you know, to incorporate more into my DJ sets when I'm playing somewhere bigger. I mean, this set, uh, this track, I've been starting my sets with um, uh, for quite a while, but it's, it's generally a starter, so it's you know it's a good sort of starting point. I want to make it into something where I can play in the middle of my set, which is big more, you know. And it, I think it'd be quite easy to do. It's a case of using his original parts, uh, but I kind of just you know just emphasising more on those and kind of having breakdowns, bigger breakdowns, etc. So, but this is the original track. You can hear quite groovy thing. I'll skip on. You know, it's got a long, long drum intro, and it breaks into a into this riff. Basically, that's it for like about eight minutes. <laughs> Isn't it? It's, just, it's a really simple track, there's nothing to it at all. It's just percussive, it's kind of, uh, you know, it's just got this riff that runs all the way through. Kick drum keeps dropping in and out, and it's, that's it. And that's, that's the beauty of it, it's simple. Maybe a little bit more percussion, but that's it, that's, just, that's it, it's its fullest point. Okay, so what I've got is, uh, Chris has been kind enough to send me all his parts, and uh, so what we've got is, you know, we've got everything broken down into loops, basically. So what I'm going to do is just drag the parts, you know, into the arrangement and start working with them. So we'll start with the main line because I think that's where we're going to get the key from. It's always good to start with something with a bit of key, obviously. Um, obviously, then you can, if you if you are going to write a new bass line, if you're going to put any rhythm or if you're going to put any noises to it, then you've got some key to work with. So uh, first, we'll have a look at the arrangement. 
Yeah, I noticed when I dragged this in the other day that there's like a bar missing of the first bit. So what we'll do is we'll kind of cut that down there. Uh, and we'll take a bit from take a bit from over here. There's your frog farting. <laughs> I knew I heard it somewhere. <laughs> so what we've got now is Now guys, what's really important while you're making an arrangement, if you can just take the time to name things as you go along, it's going to save you a lot of trouble later on, right? I know we're all lazy, but uh, so yeah, here we go. Main line. Oops. So you can hear I've basically got a basic kick drum, I uh, brought the main line into there, yeah, so. Now we'll do a bit of mixing on that. Um, obviously the kick drum needs to be a bit louder in the main line. You can see on my auto load here uh, how I work with the mixer page. It's quite, uh, I've got like, you know, four mixers open and how, I, how I've got it. With Logic you can sort of arrange the environment in any way you want. So what we've got is on the first mixer page here on this big screen, we've got, you know, just the audio. These are all audio channels. Uh, the second page by clicking on here takes you to the buses. The third page to clicking on here takes you to the auxiliaries. Um, and then finally the fourth page on the bottom is where the audio instruments are. So um, rather than having one big screen that I'm constantly having to na navigate around, I can, if I want to go to my audio instruments, it's just, it's just a case of clicking on this bottom screen here and they all come up there like that. It's quite easy. Um, I don't have to have everything in the arrangement page to be able to reference to. It's just there. Okay, so um, one technique that I use is uh, a technique called side chaining. Side chaining basically consists of, uh, well, in this particular instance, the, the, the effect I'll show you is using a kick drum to actually uh, to, to trigger a compressor. So every time the kick drum hits, it actually turns down the volume of whatever you're putting through that compressor and it gives you this nice pumping kind of effect. For instance, Eric Prides uses it, you know, to great effect. You know, you'll hear it on you'll hear it on every single dance record around at the minute. So, you know, it's it's not a new technique. It's not a it's a very well practiced technique, but for those of you that don't know how to do it, it's it's pretty straightforward. So, uh, basically what you do is you, you know, I've dragged in this little kick drum here. Uh, I've got that um, on this side chain channel. Um, I've actually turned the output off. So you're not hearing the side that the the kick so we're just using that merely as a trigger for the compressor on this main line here uh, I'll, I'll open up this compressor yeah or I'll attempt to um, on the side chain thing there basically you assign that to the track that you've put the kick drum on um, and then it's a case of just messing around with the threshold and the gain now I, I always turn auto gain off on here and what we do is then uh, so you listen to it without it. That's the basic line. Now, with it on, you can see how the, you're using the bass drum. Every time the kick drum hits, it's like turning it down. It gives you that nice sucking effect. Now you can get that more pronounced if you want by turning the threshold down. Almost to the point where it's like virtually, uh, whenever the kick drum hits, it's, you, you can't actually hear it. But we don't want it that much, so that's nice. Again, the knee there is is how pronounced it is, but that tends to put, by turning the knee down, it tends to put a bit of click into it. But the release is how quick it takes the thing to snap back, to the actual compressor to snap back to its uh, uh, zero dB again. So we'll turn that down, so we want, we want quite a fast sucking effect. So that with the kick drum, you can hear it's, it's just a bit more of an interesting rhythm. It's actually got the two are gelling together a lot better now. Like that. It's quite lifeless, quite rhythmless, really. Suddenly you put that on. And you've got a pulsating rhythm. <laughs> okay, we'll leave that for now. So the next thing to do is... Uh, and the beauty of side chaining is once you've actually got that side kick set up there, you can assign that to any compressor on any channel. So it means that you know if I want to do that side chaining effect on any 
any of, of any of the parts that he's given me I can do it's quite easy so and I do use it quite a lot for a lot of things it's a, it's a technique in itself it's actually a, it's actually a sound so right so we've brought in the uh, what we'll do now is we'll bring in the the next stage is to sort of build up the percussion maybe what we'll do is we'll start we'll start using his percussion see what we do like and what we don't like Another technique as well, which sometimes when you're working with an audio file um, and you find that you know the, the the grooves a bit too straight, what you can do is I use this delay feature in Logic here, which is quite a handy tool. And what you can do is uh, if I just mute that, uh, and if I just mute the main line, and we'll listen to this. That groove is a bit straight now. If I want to put a bit of swing onto this audio file, obviously it's difficult. It's difficult because it's an audio file and it, it is as it is, other than actually putting it into something like Recycle and cutting it up. What I can do is I can just sort of delay the track a bit forward and what that will do is sort of give it uh, that slightly swung feel. I mean you can pronounce that even more if you want. I mean I don't know how apparent that is, but to me that sounds like it's swinging a bit more. And we can, Know, even as far as you can, you can hear the swing increasing as you as you sort of delay the track further forward. So we can add an actual bit of swing without actually doing anything to the audio file, just by moving it in front of the beat. I'll have it round about ten. I think I don't want it too much. That's probably too still too straight. To be honest. Obviously, as well, when you're working with audio files, you want to make sure that you've got you know the, the, the files are actually starting right from the beginning. You got the there you go. So I'm going to put a bit more on there because I've moved the uh, start point a bit. So I've actually delayed that by like 31 milliseconds, which is quite a lot, but it's still actually, you know, it, 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 and it just gives it a nice bit of a swing. Okay, now bring the main line back into it. Um, and again, we can do that with the main line. We'll delay that. I'll probably take it up to, we'll, we'll start with 30 and see if it's too much. Slightly too much, slightly out of time. So we'll take it down to 20. Okay, again, guys, name your tracks, please. So this is, uh, what's this one called? This is 16 type. Now, if you listen to this groove, this is pretty much as his track is. His track really doesn't do much more than that. So what we're going to do is attempt to sort of maybe put a little bit more into it, and maybe a different rhythm. Um, but first we'll start by kind of bringing all these extra bits in. We've got a thing called bass line here, which I actually think is just a, a percussive. Uh, again, make sure that you... Yeah, that's a good one. Now this is just now again for yours with a trained ear you can hear that that isn't actually uh, in rhythm again the old delay technique which will sort of I've 
modulate it by 20 this time and that's giving it a bit of a swing. What we might do with this one, because the thing is that that's, it's called that bass line so that's obviously like a kick. Now that's actually hitting on the kick drum which is kind of creating a bit of, of, a, bit of a flam on the kick. Which you can hear. One way to get rid of that would be to maybe uh, actually insert a compressor onto there and use the old side chain effect. So, okay, and that will just sort of every time the kick drum hits, it will turn down the volume of what's on that channel. Um, so it'll it'll sort of uh, cover up the flam in a little bit. So again, side chain set to two. Uh, auto gain off. We'll take it down there. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's actually disguising the flam on that, that little thing. Other than going into the file um, and actually cutting those out wherever there's a kick drum, you know, it's, it's, an, it's a quick way of sort of like turning down the volume of that particular hit there. So that's still leaving your kick drum clear. I mean, obviously it's dance music, obviously it's a 4-4 four, four kick, you want the 4-4 four, four kick, that's what drives the rhythm along, you know, that, that's going to be the prominent feature of the track other than turning it up really loud, which is turning up a kick drum really loud sometimes because it's got all the energy, can sometimes eat up all your head, headroom in the mix, So, which is what you don't want to do. You want to basically leave room in the actual mix itself for the kick drum, thus the side chaining effect. Okay, so that's nice, we've got that. Bass line. We've got a crash, obviously we don't need that. We've got a, something called drone. Now I believe that drone is going to be uh, just like a bit of atmosphere. Sound of Darth Vader dying. We'll leave that for now. Obviously, that's an effect. We can use that in the arrangement later to create a bit of atmosphere or to create a, like a you know a crossover between uh, into a breakdown or something. Shh, boom, you know, we'll leave that, but we'll call it. We'll name it as we go along. Drone. Now if you were really anal, what you would do is you'd separate your audio tracks into like sections where you'd have like 1 to 10 or 1 to 20 or drums, uh, 20 to 30 or uh, you know, uh, synth noises, 40 to 50 or, uh, or uh, uh, vocals, whatever. But you know, for, just for this, I'm just going to put the tracks you know, as I drag them out into the arrangement. This is probably going to be very interesting for the guy who wrote this track to sit and watch me uh, dissect his track down. <laughs> oh, that's nice. I like that. Strange little thing. Um, also, as well, I've got universal track mode selected in Logic, so I can actually choose whether or not it's a mono or a stereo track. So I always check to see whether it's stereo. Uh, you know, sometimes, and if it, if it isn't stereo, don't waste a track by, you know, or don't waste processing by having it as a stereo track when it's only a mono track. So I'll check. Well, obviously, that's very stereo, so we'll keep it as a stereo track. Okay, name filter, filter perk. Okay, we'll just get through these quick. I'll uh, mute that. <laughs> I'll not say what this is called, but uh, I'm sure you can see on the screen. Interesting little thing. Again, side chain it. Uh, Logic's got a great compressor for side chaining. Um, I've yet to actually find another one that's got a side chaining uh, feature on it. I think some of the Sonic Alice. Is it Sonic Alice? Sonalkis. 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 What? Sonalkis. <laughs> Sonalkis. Them guys. They use. A, they've got a side chainer, but there's not many others that have. So we stick with the Logic one for now, which is actually a very good compressor, anyways. Again, we'll call that glitchy. I 
A part will mute again because it seems like an effect. Um, we've got his, his hat by the looks of things, which we'll stick in there. Okay, it's easy enough. It's easy. Again, if you delay that forward, you'll you'll have the the actual beat hitting slightly in front of the beat and slightly in front of the kick. So you'll get that you get a slightly swung feel again. So you you're pushing the groove, and swinging the groove. I'm using this percussion here as a sort of reference to the groove of the actual track. Because I like that. Uh, it's not too swingy, but it's got a certain amount of swing to it. So this is why I'm leaving this part in as we build up the groove. It's just something to reference to. Hypnotic perk sounds nice. Again, delay the track. Great way of creating a bit of swing. Add a bit of reverb. Reverb, I've got buses set up um, in my auto load. Uh, we've got from, I leave the first sort of 10 buses free, but then from 11 to 16 is just some um, bus effects basically. One of them is a reverb. Uh, well, I've actually got two reverb set up. 16 is my drum verb, which is what I use the Logic Space Designer for. Amazing reverb. Um, particularly because you can kind of you can create envelopes with this if you want. You know, it takes a while to do it. You know, I can shorten the length. I can I can do what I like, but I want I just want a nice short. Interesting kind of reverb which cuts off. So it's almost like a nice ambient gated reverb effect which I've created by, you know, sort of turning down the release on the uh, actual envelope for the reverb itself. Mainline, we've got that in. Meta, right, I imagine this is from a synth called Meta. <laughs> Here, Mum, I've made a track. What do you think? There we go, I like that. We'll leave that in again. It's amazing when you come to listen to parts, uh, especially when you're f very familiar with the original track. When you actually listen to all the things dissected, you think, where the hell is that in the original? You know, <laughs> where does he get that from? I've never heard that before. Okay, percussive, wow. That's really nice. Again, groove wise, we've uh, already moved the groove of this 16 perk type at the top to like 30, so I'd imagine this one's going to be pretty much the same. Double check that you've got your start point spot on, which it is. Um, yeah, take it to 33. There we go. Try a bit of reverb on there. Okay, nice. Uh, oh, I'm not naming them as I go along. Micro bleeps. Same delay, I call that R5, R5 perk. Uh, 
And then finally we've got snare and hat, which I would imagine would be... His actual clap. Now, I may or may not use these rhythms uh, or some of the percussion that he's got there. I might actually use my own stuff, but I think some of it's actually really nice, so it's, it would be uh, a shame not to use it. So, but, And for what I want to do is, uh, I actually want to leave the track pretty much as it is, but I just want to create you know, a bit more of a big room feel. So, so again, that needs turning down. Okay, so... On there, just as a bit of ambience. Now, what I also do as well is I'm going to now start grouping up my percussion aspects of the track. Um, so we'll take that up below there. Uh, got the percussion there. We've got. Uh, All this together, all the stuff, all the says, all the stuff that says perk, um, hat, um, snare and hat, five. Okay, so that man could lose hypnotic perk. There's a lot of perk. Everything that's percussion, we shall, including the side chain kick, we shall colour. Uh, this is a good thing to get into. Make sure you colour your your thing so you know at least what it is near and even. So we know that that's all percussive stuff. Okay, leave that out there for now. And also, what I do as well is is I generally sort of send all the percussive elements of the track to the same bus, and I just insert a compressor over that bus just to sort of homogenize the actual uh, loops a bit so they all sort of gel together. Sometimes when you're working with drums, um, you'll notice that you'll start building things up and they all sound very separate. You know, you'll have your kick drum that sounds very separate to your snare and everything sounds, you know, not it hasn't got that sort of together sound about it. So what, uh, what I always do now, and this is something that I've done quite recently, is send it all through a bus and actually just put a compressor over the top. So. Now I've got a bus set up over here, drums, bus four. Uh, so I'll send everything through bus four here, everything perk-wise. Um, now, sometimes you might not want some some of this stuff through that bus. Some of this, you might want something to really stand out above it all, so you wouldn't send it through the bus. But the general percussion aspect of it would generally go through the, uh, would, would go through that bus. So this again we'll use a logic compressor um, but we'll set the threshold off so at the minute it's not doing anything and we'll gradually lower the threshold until we can start to see a bit of gain reduction um, we've got the attack I want a bit of the actual transient of the uh, to come through, particularly the kick drum. So what I'll do is I'll turn some of the attack down uh, to like around about five milliseconds, and I'll have quite a, a, a fast release on there as well. I want that pumping kind of effect, but I want a bit of the transient to go through. Um, you can see there I've got it to about maybe about up to about five dBs of uh, gain reduction. So. I'll turn the gain up there. Now, I don't know if you can hear that, but rather than like a lot of separate percussion on top of each other, that all now sounds like it's all part of, of one. It's all, and that's just by putting a bit of gentle compression. You 
know like a 16 uh, db threshold slight bit of attack you've only got like a three uh, three to one ratio and uh, quite a fast release i mean you can have a the release gives it that sort of you know real pumping clubby feel i generally set the release around about 20 milliseconds Okay, but that's all if I want to use this, this percussion. This is all his percussion. I might want to actually construct, construct my own rhythms, which is what I think I will do, so.